A series RLC circuit consists of a 50 ohm resistor, a 3.3 millihenry inductor, and a 480 nanofarad capacitor. It is connected to a 5000 Hz EMF source with a peak voltage of 5 volts. Find the impedance, the peak current, the phase angle, and the average power supplied by the EMF. So let's start off here by finding the impedance of this RLC circuit. And when we talk about the impedance, this pretty much means what's like the net resistance of this RLC circuit, taking into account not only the resistance of the resistor, but also the so-called resistances of the inductor and the capacitor. And the inductor and capacitor don't really have like a technical, we don't call it a resistance, but instead it's called an inductive reactance for the inductor and a capacitive reactance for the capacitor. And so those are the resistances for your inductor elements and your capacitor elements. And if you combine that with the resistance from the resistor, you get this total impedance. And the formula for the impedance is Z, that's the symbol for impedance, is equal to R squared, the resistance squared, and then you're going to add this quantity of XL. XL is the inductive reactance, and that's going to be minus XC, where XC is the capacitive reactance. And then we're going to square that and take the square root of this entire quantity. And that's your impedance. Now we have to talk about what are these terms? We know what the resistance is. It's 50 ohms, as we can see in the problem. So that's easy. But we have to find out what's XL and what's XC. Well, they both have formulas. The inductive reactance, XL, or like we can think about that as the resistance of the inductor. Um, the inductive reactance is equal to XL equals 2 pi F times the inductance. 2 pi is a constant, and our frequency is 5,000 hertz. That's the frequency of the source. And then L is just our inductance. So we'll calculate this first, and then we'll move on to the capacitive reactance. So we have 2 pi times 5,000 hertz, and then times 3.3 millihenries, and milli is times 10 to the negative 3. And so this means that XL, I'll write it over here, XL, yeah, a little bit more room, XL is equal to, if you punch this into your calculator, you should get out about 104, and the unit, because we know this is like a resistance, it's ohms. And so that's our XL, and we'll use that in the formula above in just a second. Now we can calculate our capacitive reactance. Formula for capacitive reactance is equal to, it's very similar to the inductive reactance, except we pretty much just take the reciprocal of inductive reactance, one over two pi F, but instead of L, we just use the capacitance C. So now we can plug in values. XC is equal to one over two pi times 5,000 Hertz times the capacitance, which is 480 nanofarads. Nano is times 10 to the negative ninth. If you plug that in, you should get out a capacitive reactance of 66 ohms. And those are our two values for inductive reactants and capacitive reactants. So I'll make a little room now and we'll clear out this work here. Okay, so now that we have these two values there, we can plug them in to our impedance formula to calculate the impedance. So we'll do Z equals, we know that R is 50 ohms, so we can do 50 squared plus 104 minus 66. And it's that quantity, the whole quantity squared. And we take the square root of that. And then we can do Z equals, um, you should get, if you plug this into your calculator, the square root of something like 3,896. Um, and then once you take the square root of that, that'll be about 62.4 ohms. And so this right here is our impedance. And that's like our total net resistance kind of, you can think about it in this entire RLC circuit, if you take into account the contributions of the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor. So we can move on to the next part of the problem now. 
can erase this. We have to find the peak current now. And we can talk about our formula for the peak current once we get rid of this impedance formula up top. Okay, so for our peak current, the formula for the peak current in RLC circuit is pretty simple, and it parallels Ohm's law. Um, the peak current is equal to, we represent peak current as this I naught symbol. Peak current is equal to I naught, where the peak current is equal to V naught, where V naught is the peak of voltage of the EMF source. So at its maximum voltage throughout its oscillations, what is its peak value pretty much? And in this case, we know it's five volts, as we can see in the problem. And we just divide that by our impedance. And look at that, we just calculated our impedance. So we have that. And so now we can use that to find the peak current. And as you can see here, you probably recognize this relationship. Um, this is basically just like Ohm's law, or I equals um, V over R in a DC circuit. Um, but now this is an AC circuit. So we have to use the impedance instead of the resistance in order to calculate um, the peak current here, because we can't just take into account um, just the resistor, we have to take into account the net resistance and all the components. Um, and so to find the peak current, it also makes sense that we have to use the peak voltage. Um, and then we just divide that by our resistance and that'll give us our peak current. So we'll go ahead here and plug in our values. We can say that the peak current is equal to and I'll actually write it on the side over here. It's equal to five volts divided by 62.4 ohms. And that'll leave us with a peak current of, you should get 0.08 amps. And that'll be our peak current for this problem. Okay, so I'll erase that now on the bottom. We're done with our impedance. And now we need the phase angle. And so the formula for the phase angle, which we represent by this phi symbol, um, is equal to the inverse tangent or the arc tangent of the inductive reactance minus the capacitive reactance divided by the resistance. And this, I'll rewrite that there. Looks more like a C now. Okay. And we have our values for the inductive reactance and the capacitive reactance and the resistance already. So this is pretty much all same ready to go. We just have to plug in values. So we have the inverse tangent. We previously calculated, it's not here anymore, but our inductive reactance, if you remember, it was 104. And our capacitive reactance was about 66. And then we can divide that by the resistance of 50 ohms. So if you plug that all into your calculator, you should get a phase angle of 36.8 degrees. And so that's our phase angle. So now we need to find the final part of this problem, which is the average power supplied by the EMF. And the formula for the average power is gonna use two new quantities that we have to calculate. The average power supplied by the EMF in an RLC circuit is equal to what's called the root mean square or the RMS current times the RMS voltage times a quantity called the power factor, which is equal to cosine times the phase angle or cosine of the phase angle. So in order to find the average power, we have to talk about what the RMS values here are. What's the RMS current and what's the RMS voltage? And so we can talk about that by writing out the equations for them. And so we'll just clear out this phase angle information at the bottom. And now we can write out the formulas for both of these. What we need to know is that the RMS value for a quantity is equal to the peak value for that quantity divided by the square root of two. And so we can say, based off that information, that the RMS current equals the peak current, I sub naught, divided by root two, and the RMS voltage equals the peak voltage divided by the square root of two. And so from our values before, the peak current was equal to 
0.08 divided by root 2. And the peak voltage was 5 volts. We can divide that by root 2. And so now, if you plug these two equations into your calculator, for the RMS current, you should get about 0.056 volts. And for the RMS voltage, you should get 3.5 volts. And so these RMS values are always going to be less than your peak values, which makes sense because, of course, the peak values are peak values, so you can't have anything greater than that. The RMS is something like a, like a, a mean or an average. It's not exactly an average. It's a little bit different. Um, but to wrap your head around it, that's kind of what we're working with here. And it's always going to be less than the peak value. So now we can take these values and pretty much plug it into our average power formula. So we know that the P average is going to equal 0 0.056 times 3.5 times cosine for the phase angle, which we calculated before. This was equal to 36.8 degrees. Plug that all onto your calculator, and you should get an average power out of 0.16 watts. And so this is the average power that the EMF supplies to this RLC circuit.